Within the Calixis sector is a cult called the Logicians. They believe in a text that shows them a heretical path, some might say. An ambition of theirs is to bring back the dark age of technology, to bring back weapons that use warp energy, to bring back the changing of humanity's genes to create horrors, to combine elements of humanity with Xenos DNA, to create horrors, to bring back this, they say, golden age. That's what we're going to look at today. And welcome friends to another 40k video drawing from Dark Heresy, Disciples of the Dark Gods. Now who are the Logicians? They're an alliance of heretical factions and tech cults who have long been a thorn in the side of the Calixis sector, but whose origins go back considerably further into the Imperium and indeed humanity's past. Founded not around a single charismatic figure or dark religion, they found their inspiration in a forbidden heretical text called In Defense of the Future, A Logical Discourse, a work declared blasphemous by both the Ministorum and the Cult Mechanicus, and banned for several millennia. By nature, the Elditions are a so-called progressive cult. They favour the advancement of mankind through progress and the acquisition of technology, believing that they should cast off the oppression of the Ministorum, overthrow the High Lords of Terror, and put an end to the Adeptus Mechanicus's stranglehold on science and technical law. Ultimately, the logicians aim to bring about a return to the mythic power of the Dark Age of Technology and the enthronement of humanity as the omnipotent and indeed single surviving sentient race in the galaxy. Finding adherence through a secret network of ruthless mercantile interests and power-hungry nobles, the logician cult is a haven for heretics and rogue tech priests, and is highly organised and well-equipped. The logicians are calculating, secretive, and patient in the execution of their plots and intrigues, utterly callous in their pursuit of power and unceasing in their hunt for ever better weapons and tools by which to achieve their ends. For centuries, the Eclipsis sector has known the corrosive influence of the logician cult, and although the power and reach of this tech cult and its splinter factions have waxed and waned over the years, the group's presence and its insidious teachings have proven impossible to entirely stamp out. Now let's go a little deeper into that book that this is all based around. In Defence of the Future, A Logical Discourse. It first appeared more than four millennia ago in the Segmentum Solar, at the very heart of the Imperium, and some say parts of the text itself were copied from ancient and utterly prescribed works, buried deep in the vaults of Holy Terror itself, although its author, Oculator, remains unknown. In principle, by itself, I think it's a pretty good thing for Mechanicus to turn its eye away from its current doctrine and advance humanity. With the technology, those little glimpses we get back into the dark age of technology and what humanity was capable of, very few races, I think, could stand up to them if they were able to embrace that philosophy. But of course, that would be far too progressive for the Imperium. Anyway, back to the book. It looks at the dangerous philosophy of progress, that the advancement of technology and science should be immediately pursued at all costs and regardless of its source for the ultimate benefit of humanity and the restoration of the lost golden age of mankind. In such a new age, humanity would gain dominance in the stars. Like a colossus, the ancient domains of man would be reconquered, held and expanded and all the threats to human existence posed by the Xenos or the warp could be confronted and crushed utterly. To this end, the work posits the destruction of the cult Mechanicus and the overthrow of the stifling grip of imperial authority and an end to what the book refers to as the Ecclesiarchy's tyranny of lies concerning the emperor and the imperial creed. Instead, the logical course for the restoration of order and a rebirth of humanity's destiny among the stars is that power be placed in the hands of a new absolutist oligarchy of forward thinkers and those fitted by vision and superiority to rule namely the logicians themselves and that's where i think that idea kind of falls down 
The doctrines and arguments contained within the work expound the need for utter ruthlessness in order to attain the glorious coming age to which humanity is heir and goes on to advocate the forging of a secret empire within the body of the Imperium itself as the agency of its overthrow and the unrestrained pursuit of conquest and victory through the arts of technology and science at any cost. The work supports this dangerous creed with numerous worthy sounding and elaborative or elaborate justifications for any needed enormity of slaughter or sacrifice to gain the ends it glorifies, regardless of the cost in human life or freedom. In short, to attain such a living, tangible paradise, a future in which the universe itself is held in the palm of mankind's hand, no price is considered too high to reach it. So where exactly does this cult draw from in terms of its members? Who is attracted to join it? Let's take a look at that now. Arguably, the real power of the cult is the diverse number of heretics, scholars, and even renegade tech priests within its ranks. This relatively small but potent group carry out much of the cult's real activities, and each serves in its own way to contribute to the addition's power and knowledge. They are a diverse group, often operating in cells either as individuals or small cabals on a single focused project, usually being quite ignorant of each other and their activities, and answering only to the tech track that has sponsored them. They vary a great deal in power knowledge and specializations. And now that we're there, let's look at a few examples of these specialization areas and cool, interesting technology that aligns with what they perceive the dark age of technology was. A few forbidden examples. First, we'll look at engines of destruction. These are the foremost goal and desire of many tech heretics, whether it's the discovery or theft of heavily restricted designs, such as atomics or the dread life eater virus used as a tool of exterminatus, the acquisition of sophisticated relics like the secrets to creating the induction coils used in plasma weapons, or the pursuit of alien designs of terrible power. Another area they are looking into are golems and other forbidden flesh works. A golem is an artificial construct made primarily of flesh and synthetic tissue by the arts of a gene sculptor. Although a widespread technology within the Mechanicus, many branches of this law are considered heretical and forbidden. These in particular include so-called murder golems, horrific organic fabrications solely intended for violence and homunculites, bioforms fashioned from harvested human organs, alchemical serums and vat-grown tissue in the shape of a living thing with no natural origin. Rare creations include chimerics, strange amalgam creatures that combine many sources of DNA to form twisted monstrosities with utterly unspeakable results, forced psychic mutation and unspeakable slaver parasites, artificial organic grafts that subvert the will and the bodily functions of those unfortunate that they are inflicted upon. According to sacred legend, such fleshworks were forbidden by the word of the emperor during the days of the Great Crusade in response to the horrors that he and his superhuman warriors encountered in the wars to end the Age of Strife. Further, there are transgenic blasphemy. Z. This field of research embodies the techno-heresy of combining xenos, gene matter, or surgical grafts with human organic matter. It is an utterly forbidden practice and is considered both a pollution of the divine pattern by the Mechanicus and outright blasphemy by the Imperial cult. There is the Silica Animus, an artificial mind created from forbidden technologies. It is a twisted mockery of the soul of a man, treacherous and insane. Ancient texts tell stories shrouded in metaphor of such murderous and powerful creations. Next is the Malefica, perhaps the darkest and most arcane of all sciences, is the technology created to manipulate the energies of the warp or psychic force, a necessary evil for the Imperium and a cornerstone of its existence. It is a dangerous and volatile field of study, as the outer regions of the accepted uses and patterns of this technology lie, terrible devices and desires, and the melding of demonic spirits and the machinery and the channeling of the raw power of the Imperium through technology has long been a forbidden thing by the Mechanicus. Now, if you're in the Dark Mechanicus, it's a whole different story. 
Anyway, for those reckless or insane enough, the temptation to pursue such dark experiments is great, offering the possibility of creativity and function unfettered by reason of the surly bonds of the universe's physical laws. And after that up we have the Proteus Protocol. Considered a little more than a myth by many, but the ultimate goal of an obsessed few, the Proteus Protocol is an ancient and heretical technology. By transferring not only the ingomic knowledge and memory of an organic brain, but also the personality and will, granting, in effect, complete mental and spiritual immortality in an, in an artificial, physical form. Of the few legends that surround this technology, some state that the abominations created are soulless beings with dark desires and ancient hungers that can never be satiated. However, these warnings often fail to deter the protocol's most ardent seekers. And on that little intriguing note, friends, the Fibonacci of the Dark Age technology used by the logicians in the Calixis sector will wrap up today's video. What do you think to these examples? Are you quite intrigued? Would you like to see them in some books or some law? Join me a comment down below.